Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is arc and optics, the reticle choices, the reticle options, and how to use what you have. So let's get to it. All right, so one of the first things you need to decide, or maybe it's already decided because you have the optic, is what measurement system do you want your optic to be using for making these adjustments on shots? Now you've got two options. You've got the mill-based metric system, and you have the MOA, which would be like the standard-based measurement system. And let's look at it like this. If you are a person who thinks in millimeters, centimeters, meters, things like that, I'm going to recommend or suggest that you go with a mill-based measurement system in your optic. If you're the person who thinks an eighth inch, quarter inch, and one inch, and yards, not meters, yards, I'm going to suggest that you go with the MOA-based system. The other caveat here would be if you're looking to get into precision target type shooting, I may suggest that you go with the MOA setting, and we'll go with that a little bit later. If you're looking at getting quicker shots and be able to move things faster, I may say go with the mill, but we'll talk more about that later. So with that all out of the way, that's kind of our first segment of our using these reticles for dummies. So let's move on. Next thing you have to decide is do you want the VPR reticle or the VHR reticle? So the V stands for variable, the P stands for precision, the H stands for hunting, and the R is reticle. So VPR, this is the VPR. So the variable precision reticle, we're talking a lot more detail on this reticle. Now this is going to be the reticle, you can use any of them for anything, okay? But the VPR has a lot of detail and there's going to be a lot more information available to you if you're looking for infinitely precision shooting. Now the VHR, so when you're looking for a hunting reticle, what do you want? You want to be able to see that animal that you're shooting at. You don't want as much clutter in your lens, and you also need to be able to, yes, that's right, quickly sometimes get a shot off. So the VHR has a much cleaner and a quicker setup reticle for you to be able to get shots on the animals. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences with these reticles, and, and you can really use both of them with all of the arc and optics with the setup they have going on with the mechanical aspects of the scopes. But there is chapter two, VPR, precision, or VHR, hunting. You gotta decide that next, or maybe at the same time before you click that buy button, or maybe you already have it, like I said. So there's two things out of the way in another minute. So how are you going to use all of this information, all of these details, this type of reticle, this choice of measurement system to make that quality shot? You've got two options with your arc and optic. One is you can do the dial-in of your turrets. And this is gonna be what we're talking about here. And the second option is using the subtensions. This is the information within your reticle that corresponds exactly to your turrets. Now, some people really struggle to connect that sort of a thought of how does that reticle inside really pair up and work with these turrets and why would you have both? Well, think of it like this. I'm gonna take this thing of powder I got right here. And I am going to take this picture that I have of a V quiz time HR reticle. I've got the clean hunting reticle. And what I'm going to do is wrap it around this round thing here. Okay? So this right here, these lines are exactly the same as the lines on your turret. So if you are going to do, so the optic that I have in my hand, now I shoot with mill-based optics, okay? So you could do the same example with a uh, MOA type thing and whichever reticle. But this is a VHR reticle, and I have the mill uh, turret here. So if I take my turret, and if I turn my turret upward to a two, 
Now this is exactly the same, right here. There's a two right over here. If I were right there, actually, I think Pen, I'd show you better. But if I turned this to a two, is exactly the same as if I'm looking through the scope and I moved my bullseye over to this two, just like that. So my aiming point would be a two. So if I took this and I turned that two, get this up for you guys. If I turn that two as my aiming point would be exactly the same, but when this setup, you can actually, you go from your zero, when you go to your two, you still keep your reticle on the bullseye, dead center. If you use the holdovers, as it sounds, you hold it over to the two. So this is real quick, really informal, of the difference between using a holdover versus your turret to put your shot on target. All right. That out of the way, let's move on to subtension. So the subtensions, it sounds like a big complicated and fancy word and it really is not. This again, here is my picture, I'm holding this up and I'll put this on the screen for you guys to see as well. But again, I've got the VHR reticle here and the subtensions are shown out and they're outlined on here. And what subtensions are, is they are increments of the clicks that you may have on your optic. So in the case of my optic here, um, with me running the mill type optics, uh, I only have 10 clicks between each number, okay? So from a zero to a one, there's 10 clicks. But with subtensions, you may end up with your ballistic uh, calculator, and we'll get to that a little bit later because each rifle and ammunition is a little bit different, and that is a whole other uh, dummies class, which is not very dummy, that gets very complex. But the subtensions are the in-betweens. So if you were going to have a solution to put you exactly on target that said 5.2 clicks, well, with this scope, one, two, three, four, five, well, there is no point two. What subtensions are is they show you the aspect of the thickness of the line or the small hashes in between to get yourself to a point two. And you can look at this and uh, with this arc and optic right here, uh, or reticle, we can look at and getting a point two five, which gets us pretty close, uh, would be like the thickness of the line. So we would go over our point five, and then we would hold over, if we did five clicks, just a smidge or the thickness of the line in the reticle. Now there's all kinds of different subtensions on here and there's different uh, areas that you can use to measure. Now the subtensions are generally more popular with these guys, the VPR crowd. So if you are doing some kind of precision target shooting or competition or extremely long range stuff, the VPR is really more geared up to the subtensions, as you can see with all this information showing up on the bottom. For hunters, it's generally not needed to get that accurate. So this is just in a nutshell what your subtensions are. So having a good understanding of your reticle or how to use the reticle or how to use the turrets can really only take you so far. You need to actually have an understanding a bit of the caliber of the rifle that you're putting this stuff on and a fair amount of information about the ammunition. Now you don't have to go do a lot of testing and all this field work and stuff. Most of the ammunition that you buy these days has the information that you need on the side of the box or the back of the box or you can look that stuff up in forums or online. But once you get your ammunition picked out, and once you have the caliber all picked out, and you take your new scope, and you get this thing zeroed up on your rifle, is when you're gonna move into the fun stuff. And that's getting it all set up for your specific situation, for your rifle, for your precision shooting, or your hunting. Now this is only the first part to this content. The next part of this content, I'm gonna actually have a rifle out at the range. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm using the turrets to put a shot on target, or how I'm gonna actually use some holdovers to put the shot on target. I'm gonna be using my shoot through video system that I don't care for too much, and I've got some content out on that. Gave it kind of a 
that kind of review. But that is going to be the next part of the content with this. And then we're going to take it even farther and talk a little bit about the caliber differences and the ammunition differences and how you would then dial in and figure out what your drops would be or how to deal with the wind in making those elevation changes or those windage changes with your turrets or with your holdovers. So there we go. This is the first part of the content of using your arc and optic, more specifically your reticles and your turrets for dummies. Hope this stuff helps you out. Hope it gets you stoked and excited to get out behind your scope and using this thing and how to, you know, just have more fun out there, but how to get more shots on target because these things will get you there. Thanks for checking in. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that share. Haven't said all that in a long time, but what I do like to say is keep on shooting.